45 minutes, and then we try to determine what we about 15 minutes for you to ask questions or hand in uh, uh, three by five cards. And so that'll be filtered. That'll be filtered to, and to ensure that we don't have multiple questions and then uh, hand them to Molly uh, to ask the questions of the candidates. With that, uh, we're going to roll. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for coming out tonight. And thank you to all of the neighborhoods that participated and helped advertise this event and engage people to participate. Thank you to our candidates for both uh, running in the race and for joining us here tonight and for uh, Westminster Presbyterian for hosting us here tonight. Um, so just a, my name is Molly Stentz, just a few words about how this is going to run. We've got some prepared questions and each candidate will have three minutes to respond and then we'll uh, allow for a 30 second uh, follow up or rebuttal if need be. And then we're going to take your questions. As you've probably seen these index cards floating around. There's some in the back of the room and they'll be passed around. So feel free to fill these out and send them on up to me and I'll take them and we will ask them uh, as the night goes on. We have an hour um, for this event tonight and then afterward time to mingle and uh, talk to each other and to the candidates. Hard to hear you back here. Okay. I will. How's this? Yeah. Better? Is that better? Okay. Okay. I don't want to feel like I'm yelling at you, but I'll, I will try. You are. Okay. Let's <laughs> go. All right. Use the radio mics. So um, we're going to start off by doing uh, candidate introductions, and then we'll go into the questions, and then we'll have uh, some closing statements, and then we'll wrap it up for the night. So that's how how things are going to go. Um, we expect everything to be civil here tonight, um, and I'm going to be the bad guy. I'm going to cut people off if they go over time. Um, we do have uh, some timekeepers that are help keep us on track so that we can get to as many questions as possible because we know you took the time to come out here tonight and you have questions that you would like answered, so we do want to get to as many of them as possible. So we're going to try to run a tight ship and keep things going here tonight. So uh, without further ado, we flipped a coin to determine who would go first, um, and that was Steve Fitzsimmons. So he will start with his opening statement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Molly. Yeah, we have to talk a little close to this, almost touch the microphone to get it through. Is it too loud? If it, is it good? Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, uh, my name is Steve Fitzsimmons. I'm running for Alder District 10, challenging our incumbent Mo, and um, I'm running on public safety, taxes, and communicating with the community. Public safety is uh, one of my most important things. I'm the chair of the Neighborhood Watch and been working with the Madison Police Department for three years. And I believe that uh, when we work with the police closely, we uh, develop trust in the community and we, and we solve problems together. And crime goes down, property values go up. All good things. When it goes the other way, we have other problems. And uh, speaking of other problems, we have shootings. We have burglaries, all those types of things that need to be dealt with, and I think when the community works together, we can do that. Taxes, we have, I, I'm on a fixed income, so I want to keep the taxes low. I don't want to waste money on uh, wasteful surveys and studies. We did a study that uh, my incumbent voted for that was 400000 and I don't think we should be spending money on that. We have other things that we could be spending money on, such as fixing the emergency detention problem and uh, paying off our debt. We have a sizable debt that uh, we pay interest on every every day. And then, of course, community <coughs> We want to make sure that our constituents are heard and that their concerns are brought to the city council. If you have problems with snow removal or garbage pickup or bus stops, I want to hear what your concerns are and address them. If I can't do that, then take it to the next level, find somebody who can help you. So uh, those are the, the main three things. I'm, I'm, Talking about you know, some things that we might want to also include are you know speeding issues, blood in the water in the schools, and things like that. Uh, and one other thing I should have let off with is a uh, happy Women's Day. Happy Women's Day, all women. And there's a big thing going down at the Capitol today. Uh, uh, one of those things. And uh, one of the things that was in the news today, if uh, you know equal pay, it was uh, 
if you right now you're if you're a woman you're making what a man was making 10 years ago so you've got a lot of catching up to do i don't know if the city council could do anything about that but i'd certainly be on your side if that ever came up uh, so i think i might finish actually early with this uh, that, that's all i have. well thank you very much everybody thank you for coming tonight appreciate it Good evening. My name is Maurice Cheeks. Um, thank you to the Neighborhood Associations for, for organizing this. Uh, thanks to Molly and thanks to you guys for all coming out. This is, uh, this is a really good crowd. I was not sure how this was going to go. It's sort of a testament to our neighborhood and to our community and our commitment to civic engagement. So um, uh, a lot of familiar faces in the room. Forgive me if, if some of this is redundant as I sort of tell a little bit about my story. but. Um, as I said, my name is Maurice Cheeks, and I am um, uh, I'm a member of the Madison City Council. I've been on the City Council for four years now. In addition to my work on the Council, I, have, uh, I am on the Board of Directors for the Foundation for Madison Public Schools. I am uh, on the Board of Directors for an organization called the New Leaders Council. I'm the founder of the Leading Locally Movement as a, as a uh, response to you know, this moment of division, hate, and uh, um, a lot of things from the national government that, that we can't be excited about. Um, and uh, I've been really honored to have the opportunity to serve you for the past four years. Some of the things that I've um, been most proud to be able to work on are you know, things like um, you know, the implementation of a, of a new hiring practice called Ban the Box, where we change the way that we screen employees. Um, also, some of the things like pr producing long-term transportation studies that are going to drastically influence the way that we're going to uh, continue to experience transportation in the city. As we continue to grow, we're going to continue to experience traffic that uh, is going to make our lives a little difficult, but I, with serious proactive work, we can, we can make our way through that. I have... Um, I'm running for re-election because I firmly believe that as we work together in our community, as, as I've seen in so many examples of our community uh, coming together to solve problems, whether it's you know to build uh, to, to to build an ice rink out here or to um, uh, advocate for a new uh, crosswalk on the other side of the school or whatever the case may be, I've seen the best of our community as we come together to solve problems. Um, and moreover, I really, truly believe that in this moment in time, local government is gonna need to be sort of our backstop for civil democracy. Um, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to be your voice on the city council in exactly that sort of way. Um, so we have a lot more work to do in the next two years, um, but I'm excited to, to, to be able to support you in that. Thank you. All right, now for the questions, and we'll just trade off going first, so we will start with you, uh, Maurice. What are the top three districts affecting, the three, top three issues affecting So in the past four years, I've um, had the opportunity to build relationships with, uh, with constituents, and in the past couple of months, had the opportunity to knock uh, on several hundreds of your doors. Uh, some of you, you know, might get tired of me or, or some, of my, some of my folks knocking on your, on your door, but um, really the, the primary themes that I've heard recently and historically are um, public safety, development-related issues, and education. So starting at the back end, of course, as you know, this election on April 4th is going to be for city council, but also on the ballot, you're going to see school board and state superintendent. Um, city, the city doesn't control education. It's a whole different, whole different uh, organization. Uh, that's going to be the school board and, and, and uh, you know, with direction from the state superintendent. I've been excited to be able to work collaboratively with, um, with the school board in the past several years, as, I'm, as I mentioned, I'm the board of directors for the Foundation for Madison Public Schools. Also been able to work over the past couple months with Tony Evers, um, collaborating with them and, and working uh, to support their campaign. Um, 
the city level, it's going to be super important that we build relationships with the school. That's the work of the city, is investing in our people. And if we're not investing in our children, um, I don't know what we're doing. Um, on the issue of, of uh, development, on the issue of development, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to be brief on that one, and we'll surely have time to get back to it, but we're experiencing a tremendous amount of growth in our city. You guys know that. You see the buildings going up all the time. You see new construction happening all the time. And um, I feel that it's very important as a local elected official to be able to uh, keep us mindful of how we grow. Keep us mindful of that and keep uh, the impacts of growth to be um, helping us to be uh, continue to be a more affordable community and continue to make the impacts of growth not impact uh, transportation in ways that it doesn't need to. So things like the Monroe Street redevelopment, uh, which I'm sure is top of mind for a lot of folks if, if you're trans, you know, trans uh, drive downtown, that's going to be a lot. On public safety, which is the largest part of our city's budget, um, we have a tremendous amount of work to do to continue to support our police um, and to continue to invest in the, uh, the long legacy of proactive, progressive community policing that we've seen here. Been really proud to be able to support that through uh, funding for police, funding for uh, increasing police salaries, uh, increasing the number of officers that we put on the streets in the past four years, and fighting hard to keep Midtown Police Station in the budget. Thank you. All right, same question for you, Steve. What are the top three issues for you? Um, well, I, I brought them up right at the top. Uh, I was talking about uh, public safety being number one, and part of public safety is uh, addressing the emergency detention issue that pulls 300 police officers off our streets every year to escort emergency detention to Oshkosh Winnebago facility. So issue number one would be to res help resolve that problem that's been going on for four years. And the next thing would be drugs. See what more we can do to address the drug problem, address the shootings. This is all under public safety. It's the shootings that have been happening. Find jobs for our youth that would help with the shootings. And, um, you know, work with the city on taxes, lowering our taxes, and uh, not wasteful spending, and then of course communicating with the citizens. When I go door to door, one of the biggest complaints I hear is, uh, first is, oh, this is the first time I ever had it all, they're knocking on my door, uh, it's nice to meet you. Second question that comes out is, I've written to alders and nobody ever gets back to me. And I said, well, that won't happen with me. I'll make sure that I get back to you. I know firsthand that happens because it happened to me. And I, and so I know what it feels like. So those, I, again, I go with the public safety taxes and uh, communicating with the uh, citizens, solving problems such as the emergency detention issue and dealing with the uh, shootings, the building trust with our police. Uh, the police are awesome, and I think that's the key to solving so many of our uh, public safety problems. We had a shooting just yesterday. Uh, it was a random shooting, and we need the community to work with the police to solve those problems. We need witnesses to come forward. We need people to feel that they can trust the police to help them solve those problems. And like I said, I've been with the Neighborhood Watch for uh, going on uh, three years and have developed quite a relationship with them all based on trust that I know it works. I appreciate the Midtown Station, but the police need more. They need more police officers, especially with the emergency detention problem that exists, but they're also short about 80 officers, even if they didn't have the emergency detention problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question. So, as we know that Madison City Council has hired a consultant to review the police department policy at an estimated cost of 400000 This came about after several officer-involved shootings and much community conversation about policing methods in our city. Do you believe the review of the police department as proposed is an important step in making the MPD more effective and more accountable? And we'll start with you this time, Steve. 
I, thank you. Well, a very good question. Goes to the heart of uh, a couple of the things I've been talking about. One is four hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money. We can spend that money on a lot of other things to help the city grow, pay off our debt, so we're not paying such high interest on our, our debt. But more important, we don't want to demoralize our police and have a, a study. We've already had the study by the state, by the uh, by the city and the county. They're doing a great job. Why are we spending four hundred thousand more when we don't need to? That's wasted dollars that you and I are paying for. The other thing is the morale. We don't want to send the wrong message to the community that the police need to be investigated. They're doing a good job. Why are we Why are we putting them under a microscope? We want to. We want to show that we trust our police, and especially in problems when when there's a shooting, we want to stand side by side with our police and support them. And that goes a long ways to building trust in the community. When you have people going against that, when you have alders, city council, mayor, all turning their backs on the police, not standing with the police, that sends a message to the community that they're not trustworthy, that there's something wrong with the police, something's going on with this relationship. We want to stand with them all the time and show that that we have their back, that we are with them. And I think that goes a long ways. And, and for, for the trust of the community, it goes a long ways. And like I say, you have to have that trust to solve problems, to keep the community safer, raise your, raise your property value, lower your crime. You want to have that partnership with the police. It's very, it, I would say it's vital. You have to have that. If you don't, then you don't even have problems. So $400,000 study sends the wrong message. Thank you. All right, same question for you, uh, Maurice. Do you believe the review of the police department as proposed is an important step in making the MPD more effective and more attractive? So the heart of your question is, is it important to, to keeping uh, our, safe, our, safe, our community safe? and allowing the police to be accountable in effect. Um, <clears throat> the city council absolutely supports our police. This is why, year over year, we continue to invest in our police officers. We find opportunities to invest in, um, uh, we find opportunities to, to seek out federal grants so that we can put more officers on the street. Um, we find opportunities uh, to uh, provide raises even in an environment where uh, it's it's very difficult to stretch uh, the tax dollars to provide a raise year over year. That comes that comes from an increase in taxes. Now, on the question of is it helpful to a police, I had a I had a great conversation with um, well. So during during the summer when we were discussing this in, this issue. Um, as an elected official, it's my job to reach out to those most affected. Um, I have several conversations with rank and file police officers, um, and, and one stands out to me as particularly fun. Uh, we walked all throughout the neighborhood. I, this is a, de a detective that I, I knew a little bit. Um, I said, can you meet me on a Saturday morning? We got coffee and we walked all throughout the neighborhood. It's a particularly hot day and we're drenching sweat two hours later, but we're deep into this conversation where uh, you know, essentially her, her message was, A, we're proud of our work. Uh, we're proud of the fact that we have a strong legacy of being a progressive police force, of being a, a, a police force that um, tries hard to build relationships with the community. And B, if there's room for improvement, if the study's gonna help us identify areas where we can continue to get stronger and serve our community better, and keep our community safer, Bring it on, because of course that's what we want, right? And we heard that same testimony at the city council on that night from other officers who said, "We just want to be the best." Um, and so I think that uh, I, I think that that's if you review the intent of that proposal, you'll see that loud and clear. That's what the city council wants. We want to continue to invest in um, building and extending the legacy of a strong police force. And as our city continues to grow, and as our, conti our, our city continues to deal with new and uh, uh, unique challenges as a growing city, we gotta continue to sharpen our game, and we're gonna do that, because we wanna continue to be one of the safest communities in the world, which is a, a, a reputation that we hold, and we should be very proud of, and we should be absolutely committed to maintaining that. 
Thank you. Our next question is about food deserts. So food deserts are defined as areas that lack access to healthful, healthful fresh food, including fruits and vegetables. And that uh, actually involves a lot of this district, looking at the map of food deserts. The question is, what policies would you support to help reduce food deserts in the city to increase access for healthy food? Well, Molly, thanks for explaining what a food desert is. I remember when I was uh, first elected to the city council, I had only a vague notion of what that meant and uh, had a difficult time reconciling that we lived, that we had a city that could have food deserts. Knowing our economy as I do, knowing our business industry as I do, we actually have a strong and competitive grocery market here, as most of you uh, think about going to get grocery.